Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I wanna share with you the 10 habits that I formed to help me overcome my shopping addiction, my impulsive shopping, my excessive shopping tendencies. I think a lot of these points I probably have touched on in dribs and drabs throughout the last maybe six months of my videos, but I wanted to put them all in a video really concisely, especially right now if you feel like you're struggling, especially with Christmas coming up, can you believe it's already September? You're seeing a lot of the new spring or fall trends coming into circulation on social media. Maybe you're feeling a little bit tempted. So I'm gonna start with number one. That is pretty, pretty obvious. You have to stop watching and stop following specific content that is not serving you or helping you in a positive way. I'm sure you already know that and it's a lot easier said than done, but it's basically like saying that you want to lose weight or get healthy, but you find yourself stopping into the candy shop or the bakery every day. You're putting your willpower under unnecessary stress and making you and your willpower and your mind work harder to try to avoid these things if you're putting yourself in environments where you're constantly exposed to things like this. So whether it be you're constantly stopping into your favorite store or constantly scrolling new arrivals or constantly watching influencers or people on social media talk about the new it bags, the next hot bags, their wish list, things they're buying, things they're wanting, that is not going to have a positive effect on you. There are other forms of content, other genres, other niches, other topics and other channels that you would probably really love. I'm not telling you to give up YouTube. I'm not telling you to give up social media. I love YouTube, okay? And when I was moving away from the luxury fashion community, I was like, oh my God, this is what I love to watch. This is solely what I watch on YouTube. Whereas I was able to find different people that I resonate with, different channels, different communities, different niches, different topics that I enjoy just as much, if not more than the old content that I used to consume and create. So I definitely think it's possible. You may just have to do a little bit of research, get curious with yourself, get curious with the communities out there and find new content and different types of content to watch online. I actually started regularly journaling. I started to regularly jot down my thoughts and ask myself the right questions. And I actually created a 14 day journal that I'm gonna have linked in the description uh, if you wanna download it. These are questions and these are things that I contemplated in my journaling process and things that I journaled about that I think really helped me for my new direction in life and step away from my old shopping habits. I'm gonna have it linked in the description if you wanna download it and give it a go. I'd love to hear what you think. This is like the first thing that I've created on YouTube. So I'm a little bit excited about it. Let me know what you think of it. Let me know if you enjoyed the questions. Let me know if it helped you in any way. If you plan to download it, if you plan to use it, I would love your feedback. I would love to know what you think of it. This one's a little bit peculiar and a little bit weird, but you know, whatever works for you, right? So. I love traveling, okay? I love adventures as much as they scare me and I get really nervous and I get really anxious and scared. I love new adventures. I love adventures to far off countries and far off destinations and it is so expensive to travel, especially if you are in Australia right now. I mean, show me what it's like in your country, but with the state of the economy right now and you know the kind of trickle on effect of COVID and the pandemic, these flight prices are literally, like, they're breaking my back, okay? They're they're really making me angry. One thing that I've always loved just as much as shopping is traveling. Love traveling, I love it, I adore it. So something that I started doing, whenever I was getting kind of that urge or maybe that like slight desire to look for a new bag or look for something new, I would pull out my laptop and I would look up flight prices. I would specifically look up flight deals and see like the cool deals that were happening, any any you know special deals that were on with Qantas or Emirates or um, the various other airlines that, that fly to the places that I want to go, I would look up Airbnbs. If you have a problem with scrolling and you're trying to replace the habit of scrolling new arrivals, get Airbnb, like the Airbnb app on your phone if you haven't already. Some of the houses, some of the really cool locations that are on Air Airbnb, it, they blow my mind. Like they're just so magical, they're so luxurious, they're so beautiful all around the world. I've just found some amazing, crazy places that just, I can't believe they're real. To the point where it kind of gives me butterflies, okay? I don't know about you, are you like this? When I'm looking up flights or accommodation or something overseas, I get like this excited butterfly feeling, even though I'm actually not going anywhere, but just the thought and the, the almost the planning that I'm kind of doing by looking at these things gets me all excited and it gives me butterflies in my tummy. And I look at these things like the flights, the accommodation and the cost of them. And I stare at that price and I think, wow, 
you know, $5,000 return to LA or, you know, Europe or something like that or London, that's a price of a bag. I mean, technically in these, in these days, a handbag may be more expensive and I just can no longer justify I can no longer justify it. it almost repulses me from from that desire or that thought pattern of oh i kind of want a new bag or i want something new because you know a memory an experience a trip overseas yes you may have some down points you may lose your luggage or get lost or you know maybe you might get something stolen but the, the memories and the fun times and the adventures that you have on holidays and on vacations are just for me some of the best memories like don't get me wrong i've had some horrible times like i've had some really scary iffy times and crazy times but making them out alive it creates and makes for the best stories and the, the best memories and i just don't get that from a handbag i don't get that from a piece of fashion you know the memories i still have memories from going to the bahamas when i was 19 years old and i found myself there on spring break i didn't even realize it was spring break and oh my god i had the time of my life I can't replace that yet the handbags the clothes the shoes the, the things that i bought that i in a few years find myself falling out of love with or not wanting or not liking anymore. Either end up in a charity shop or that I end up selling them for half if not a quarter of what they're worth. Whereas my memories, those memories stay with me forever. And look, look at the big smile on my face. I developed the habit of no longer late night scrolling. And I guess you could kind of tie that into my previous point. If you're having trouble completely eliminating late night scrolling, replace it with something else, okay? Find yourself scrolling beautiful destinations that you'd like to visit one day and making a little wish list of places that you'd love to see, a bit of a bucket list if you will, or scrolling Airbnb. Replace that late night scrolling habit with something else because I do find that late night scrolling has probably got to be the worst thing. Late night, first thing in the morning, the worst times to scroll, the worst times to be on websites where you can be spending your money in that way. I mean, it's funny. I think it's because I do have a little bit of like, oh, nervousness around traveling. So that yes, I will scroll flights. I will scroll accommodation. But because I live here in Australia and because I have commitments like my dog, my job, my life here, I can't just pick up and go. So I will look at these things, but I will never pull the trigger. Like I'm never, you're never gonna find me. I'm just not that type of person, okay? I, I've never been someone to late night scroll at 12 o'clock midnight and be like, oh my God, there's a really cool holiday destination. There's a really cool hotel or a flight deal you know, 20 hours away, let's go and book it now. No, 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 absolutely not. Absolutely not, that's just not in me. I used to do that with clothes, I used to do that with bags, I used to do that with shoes. So stopping that late night scrolling, maybe picking up a book, maybe, you know, putting a puzzle together or scrolling something else. Maybe I was just kind of on autopilot before, you know, obviously we all step into our wardrobes most days and pick something to wear and get dressed. I guess maybe I was just so on autopilot or I didn't care or it, it didn't bother me as much, but just now when I step into my wardrobe to pick something to wear, I do look at the incredible excess that I have. And a lot of the things that I have, I've, I've slowly been dwindling my wardrobe down to things I actually love and I wear and I enjoy, but there are still pieces in my wardrobe that yes, I love, I don't wear them a lot, but I'm still holding on to them. And so I'm constantly now reminded, I constantly make myself aware, I've formed the habit of looking around my space and realizing how much I have and, and the excess of what I have and the things that I still need to get rid of. And I obviously don't try to have too much of a negative spin on it. I do acknowledge how grateful I am. I do take a moment to be grateful for the things that I have, grateful that I had a borderline shopping addiction when the price increases weren't so like, ouchy, but I look around at my space and I'm grateful for the things that I have, but I'm aware that it is a lot. It is still a lot of things to own. You can actually train your brain into, into anything really. You can train your brain to believe that you have a lot, you have enough. And I managed to do that with my wardrobe. So that constant reminder keeps me from, from spending or unnecessarily spending or over shopping. <music> Selling and moving things on is what's going to help you and, and help you really make that change. It's one thing to say, oh, I really wanna you know, cut down and I really wanna declutter and I really wanna stop impulsively shopping and I really wanna stop making so many silly decisions in my wardrobe or in my life. It's one thing to say it, but as soon as you start making and taking action and selling things, 
that is when you see the real change. Whether it be, you know, selling, whether it be donating, whether it be gifting or giving to family or friends. I've done a variety of different things. I'm still doing a variety of different things. Um, I now dedicate one day a week. It's usually Saturday or Sunday, sometimes Friday afternoons. Depending on much how much time I have, maybe I'll spend half an hour, maybe I'll spend an hour or two or three hours. And I will declutter a certain space, whether it be a drawer, whether it be my entire kitchen, whether it be a cupboard, whether it be, you know, a, a different area of my house. But I spend at least one day a week decluttering something and also selling, taking the time to sell or list items, um, whether it even just be you know, pricing them or trying to write descriptions for them. Just as long as I do something towards it, I feel better. I feel like I'm on the right track. Sometimes when we look at our wardrobe and we see so much stuff and we just see bags and bags of things we need to get rid of, we just, I mean, I know I have in the past. I look at that and think, oh my God, that's not even a day's project. That's like probably a whole three week process all day, every day. And I just get so overwhelmed. And because I know I can't do it all in one day and because I know I don't want to do it, I just think, oh my God, that's too much effort. That's too much work. That's too much brain power. And I walk away. Whereas really, realistically, especially on the weekends when I'm a little bit more casual, a little bit more, you know, ha, <sighs> I can spare half an hour. Okay, I can, sp I can spare an hour to, to work on this. And I've accepted and I'm okay with the fact that my decluttering and my selling process it may take months, it may take years, but at least I'm doing something small to it every week. At least I'm moving inch by inch towards that goal. The next habit that I was able to form, I have talked to you about before in the video where I mentioned finally getting my financial shit together at the age of 30. I'll have that one linked if you haven't seen it. But I mentioned in that video that I now have a weekly budget planner that I fill out. And that's been so beneficial for my financial health um, and also just for my spending in general. But something else that I started doing was actually checking my accounts every day. Okay, And it takes literally five seconds. I just check my my app on my phone and I see my accounts, I see my funds, I see what I have there. Getting in that habit of checking my accounts every day on top of doing my weekly budget planner, it's really helped to overcome my impulsive shopping and just my my constant desire that I used to have to have something new and to buy something new and to wear something new. Now, you know this already, but again, some of these are just gonna be nice, subtle reminders of things that you already heard and you already knew. But time and space are some of the most valuable things. Time and space are what are gonna save you from charging that credit card, from making unnecessary purchases, from making silly decisions, making reckless financial decisions, and just wasting time and money on stuff that you don't even need. So there's almost a little bit of comfort in knowing, okay, you know what, just take 24 hours minimum, okay? I'd give it, I'd give it at least 48 hours to a week, honestly, but, Knowing that, you know what, okay, you've got this thing in your cart, you know, you're not saying you're not gonna buy it, but just take a step back, take a step back. And I can guarantee you 90 to 95% of the time in my experience, you realize that desire's gone away, that urge is no longer there, and you realize you don't even need it, you don't even want it, as long as you just give yourself that space. And like I said, take comfort in telling yourself, you know what, I'm not saying I'm not gonna buy it, just I'm gonna take a step back, and I'm just gonna let the let the dust settle, okay? Let it settle, let that excitement and that, oh my God, that's such a cute top. Let that just kind of level out, pop it in your cart and come back to it in 24 to 48 hours. Sometimes you might wanna go ahead and still buy it. I can guarantee you a lot of the time, you're gonna just think, hmm, hmm, the desire's not strong. The desire's not as strong, I don't need it. The next one I think is so relevant, especially now. I mean, I'm, I'm being served content like full fashion trends. First of all, I'm going into spring, but you know what I mean? Like we're seeing the new season trends come out and the biggest thing that I, I feel like I can tell you, and again, this may just fall on deaf ears because for years it fell on deaf ears for me. And one day you will just wake up, the penny will drop and you'll just get it, okay? You'll just get it. You have to get to a place of not caring about trends. And I'm even gonna go so far as to say ignoring trends and not being excited by trends anymore. I am no longer excited by trends. Most of my 20s were spent chasing trends. What are the next trends? What's hot to be wearing this year? I don't give a flying F anymore, okay? I don't. I am more interested in classic, timeless fashion. Pieces in my wardrobe 
that's a standing the test of time. That is what I'm more interested in. I couldn't give a rat's about trends anymore. You kind of have to get to that point. And again, like I said, it, it it's not going to really hit and resonate with you until it does. But I can guarantee you, if you're just like, whatever, Caitlin, you sound like my mum, stop lecturing me. Okay, I get it. I, I was there. I used to be there. Until you just wake up one day and realize that you are chasing your tail. Chasing trends is just like a forever chasing of your own tail. You're just forever on a little hamster wheel and you can't get off. But while you're on that hamster wheel, you're just like throwing money. <laughs> and you realize one day it's just no longer worth it. You'd think it's not a good thing, but I've actually realized that it is a good thing. And if I cannot for the life of me stop thinking about something, I'll just buy it. I had this example just last week. I have been thinking about a pair of specific shoes for the last like two months on and off. And they finally got restocked on a website. And I just thought, you know what? I cannot for the life of me stop thinking about these shoes. I'm just going to buy them. I'm just going to buy them. And the old way that I used to do this was I'd do it. If I couldn't stop thinking about something, I'd just buy it. And then I'd just try them on, think, oh yeah, they're cute, and go about my merry way. I don't do that anymore. If I can't stop thinking about item, I will buy it. And like I mentioned you in a previous video, I don't know, remember which one, but I have an accountability partner as such, a woman who is going through the similar trajectory as me, who's on the similar path as me. I run these purchases by her now. I say, look, I just bought this or I want to buy this. What do you think? Be honest. And she'll tell me your honest opinion. Not only that, I also consult two other people in my life and I have ensured that those people know and I vocalize to them. They know very well that I'm trying not to make so many silly decisions with my money and I'm trying to stop overspending and stop overbuying. They know, they know where my headspace is at. They know what I'm trying to achieve. And they are also people who are not at all into fashion in that way, okay? They do not spend their money in that way. They do not care for things like that. It's my mum and it's my boyfriend. <laughs> so between my mum, my boyfriend, and my accountability partner, okay, that's my dream team, baby. They're my dream team line up right there. And they help me. And I'm either considering making a purchase or if I just cannot for the life of me stop thinking about a purchase, I'll buy it, I'll bring it home. And I'll show my accountability partner. I'll tell her about it. I'll show her a picture. She'll give me her honest feedback. I'll run it by my mum and my boyfriend. They're not going to tell me, oh my God, yes, babe, keep it. That's so cute. They're not going to do that. They're going to be real with me. Sometimes the answer is, yeah, it's nice, but do you need it? Or, you know, do you have anything else like it? Or, hey, that's a really cute top, but it kind of looks like this one in your wardrobe that you already have. And I'm just like, yeah, it does, doesn't it? It, it, it does. <laughs> it's a habit that's really, really been helpful for me and it's really helped to kind of bring me back down to reality, bring me back down to earth, is having those three people, AKA my dream team, to bring me back down to earth. I know I said this was 10, but look at me, I'm throwing in a number 11. The final habit, and I actually do believe it's a habit, is I think that you have to form the habit of finding joy in something else. Happiness and joy, these are mindsets and these are things that can be developed and things that you can train within yourself. I know of women who say, you know, but like shopping's the only thing that makes me happy. Luxury fashion's the only thing that makes me happy. This is the only thing that makes me happy. And that may very well be true, but it doesn't have to be true, okay? It doesn't have to be. Maybe it's gonna take you trialing a variety of different ha hobbies, a variety of different activities, a variety of different things that you think you may be interested in, and you may not love them right away. You may not enjoy them the first time. You may really suck at it. You may try, you know, tennis, or you may try pottery, or you may try cooking, or you may try gardening, and you may hate it, or you may not be very good at it, or you might find it exhausting. But I do think that there's something to be said for Maybe asking yourself that question, do I just do I just not enjoy it because I'm not good at it or because it's new or because it's different or do I genuinely not like it? I just wanted to throw this in as a bit of a bonus tip because I feel like it's not it's not easy, okay? It's just I know how easy like how easy is it? Just find joy in something else. I know it's not easy. And you know, maybe it could be a whole video in itself. I mean any of these points really could be a whole video in itself, but finding that joy in a different place, in a more wholesome place, in a place that feeds your soul. 
may really, may really help you out. I will have that little downloadable PDF, my little journaling 14 day prompts. If you are interested in giving that a go, I'd love to hear what you think. But yeah, please share with me what you think of today's video and what you think of the habits that I mentioned. And if you'd like me to elaborate on any of them further, if you have any video ideas, I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. Please share with me all your thoughts. I'm gonna have another one linked right here. If you haven't had enough of me just yet, feel free to join me over there. Thank you so much for joining me in today's video and I'll see you in my next one.